Blue ear and ear infections are extremely common disorders of childhood. By the age of five, nearly every single child will have experienced at least one episode of acute otitis media. This is a picture of a normal eardrum. Notice it looks quite clear and shiny, almost as if it is made out of cellophane or glad wrap. We'll return to this normal appearance later when we compare this with the appearances of glue ear and ear infections. The ear comprises an external ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The middle ear connects to the back of the nose by the eustachian tube. In children, the eustachian tube is short and narrow. As we grow, the tube becomes longer and more vertically oriented. Respiratory infections such as colds and the flu cause swelling in the eustachian tube. This may then render it unable to allow the passage of air up and down it and may stop it from draining mucus from the middle ear. Infection in the adenoid may be a contributing factor in the cause of glue ear and ear infections. We recommend its removal in children who have respiratory obstruction at night time, that is significant snoring with associated restlessness, or in children who are having a second set of grommets inserted. This is a photograph of an eardrum which has mucus behind it, which is typical of glue ear. Notice on the right hand side of the photograph there are a couple of air bubbles. This is another photograph of an eardrum which looks a little more inflamed. You can see prominent blood vessels on the surface of the eardrum and some white creamy mucus behind the eardrum. This is again fairly typical of glue ear. The term glue ear merely refers to the consistency or nature of the mucus behind the eardrum, which is often rather thick. This in turn can reduce the mobility of the eardrum and then reduce the transfer of sound vibrations through to the inner ear. This is what causes a mild deafness associated with glue ear. The deafness is reversible when the ear clears, either naturally or with the insertion of grommets. This is a photograph of a bulging, very sore looking eardrum, which is characteristic of a nasty acute otitis media or acute ear infection. The symptoms typically would be severe ear pain associated with a fever and a lot of night waking. Some children who have had a lot of ear infections or a lot of glue ear in the past may develop some damage to their eardrums. This typically results in a rather weak or floppy eardrum which can be sucked inwards as a result of negative middle ear pressure. This is caused by some obstruction to the eustachian tube and resorption of oxygen out of the middle ear into the bloodstream. This in turn may result in erosion of the hearing bones and a more permanent type of conductive hearing loss. Children who show signs of eardrum retraction need regular checkups to ensure that the retraction is not deteriorating. Grommets sometimes fall out a little early in children with eardrum retractions and this is another reason for keeping a very close eye on them. Grommets are tiny plastic tubes which are inserted into the eardrum under a general anaesthetic. The procedure takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes and is painless for most children. There is a recovery time of approximately 60 minutes afterwards, following which your child can return home.